you just got your brand new Steam Deck OLED or LCD and are wondering if there's anything you should do first once receiving the device. To be completely honest, the Steam Deck is a completely easy device to use, combining the nuance of PC gaming with the ease of use and accessibility that traditional consoles provide. Despite that, there are still a plethora of different things that you could do in order to enhance the experience further and truly maximize the entirety of your experience with the Steam Deck. I'll be breaking that down into a few different components throughout this video. So if if you've just gotten your Steam Deck or are wondering what to do first with your Steam Deck, this is the video for you. This section is mainly going to comprise of the basics and the general setup of your Steam Deck. First things first, of course, you need to sign into your existing Steam account or if this is your first experience with PC gaming, you want to quickly create a Steam account. Of course, like any other account creator, this is super easy with your email and password and of course your username for everyone else to see. Once you've done that and signed into your Steam account or made a new Steam account, I want you to head to the store and start wishlisting games that you would like. The Steam store is easily the biggest PC storefront for games and there are over 30,000 games here to choose from. From all the big games such as Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Jedi Survivor, you even got indie hits such as Hollow Knight and so forth. There are so many games to choose from here and I believe no matter what your taste is in games, you're going to find something here to enjoy on the Steam store. Once you've clicked through and looked at different games in the store, you want to head on over to your wish list. So once you've wishlisted your games from the store, you can head on to your wish list which will show all of your wishlisted games as well as if they're discounted or not in their current price. Because the Steam Autumn sale is currently on, there is a bunch of games on sale, with many of your favorites probably going to be on sale at the moment. So if you haven't picked up games for your Steam account, this is probably the best time to do so. Just a quick note, but I'm not going to really delve into it. If you press the Steam button on your Steam Deck, you can navigate onto the desktop mode, which is basically the version of Windows, for example, on this handheld. This is where you can go to different browsers and whatnot and do a bit more complicated things. But if you're just wanting to play games purely on the Steam Deck and not mess around with anything else, the desktop mode is really not relevant at all, so you can completely ignore this if you want to. Other than that, once you've wishlisted your games, bought some games, already have some games in your Steam account, you can just start installing them straight away, waiting for them to download and hopping right into the game. This section concerns the compatibility and performance aspects of the Steam Deck. Firstly, I want to talk about compatibility with games on the Steam Deck. Steam Deck games will be categorized into three different areas, either playable, verified or not supported at all. Of course, if a game is not supported, it doesn't mean it's not going to work on the Steam Deck. As many of the games I have played on my Steam Deck to completion have been not supported, but have worked completely fine out of the box. And same goes with playable games. But it's always good to check the compatibility and you can easily do so while browsing games on the store or looking through your installed games or the games you have in your library. And it'll say game info. In this game info section, it will say whether a game is verified, playable and so forth and the reasons as to why it got that rating. For example, Baldur's Gate 3 is rated as verified and this is due to a plethora of reasons that will be there in the game info section. You want to keep an eye on this but I'd still recommend that if you're wanting to buy or play a game completely on your Steam Deck, you should watch a performance video of that game on the Steam Deck on YouTube to really gouge how the performance is going to be despite whether the game is playable, supported, etc. Now moving on to performance, it is extremely important that you familiarize yourself with the performance overlays that is available on the Steam Deck. I'm not really Want to check on my FPS so I won't really have the counter on but you can turn the counter on and other metrics while playing games have I personally don't do that however what is important is that in the performance overlay section you can customize the TDP limit TDP limit is essentially the power usage of your Steam Deck the lower this is when you're playing a certain game the more battery life you will get however if you're playing a really demanding game such as Red Dead Redemption 2 you probably want to crank this up almost to the maximum which I usually do but you're still gonna get two to three hours of battery life depending on how you tailor your settings within the game as well. So the TDP limit, there's no real one solution for all. You really just have to mess around with it with the different games you play and tailor it to your liking. Other than that, you can also change the FPS limit, which is important as if you can't hit 60 FPS in a game, but would like a smooth 30 FPS, you can add that here, or you can even do 40 FPS if you'd like. Overall, the performance and compatibility aspects of the Steam Deck are extremely important. And I really recommend that you familiarize yourself with these components as you'll be seeing these as you play through your game games on your Steam Deck. 
This quick section will be about accessories and potential storage options for your Steam Deck. If you'd firstly like to play your Steam Deck on the TV or on a bigger screen such as a monitor, I highly recommend getting a dock. You can either get the pretty expensive Steam Dock, but it looks very quality and although I do not own it, I'd probably buy it if I had the money to do so. However, if you can't afford that or just like a cheaper alternative to that, which still does the exact same thing and with a level of quality as well, you can just buy a USB-C hub from Amazon, such as the one that I'm holding right now in the video. This cost me about $15 and it can easily help you dock your Steam Deck up to your TV or a monitor and also charge the Steam Deck while doing so so you're not running out of battery of course when you have it docked. Other than that I think it's extremely important that you upgrade your storage as well. Not the internal storage per se but just getting an SD card. Even if you got the 512 gigabyte option or one terabyte option even like I did then you're still going to run out of storage on your Steam Deck. Games nowadays take up way too much space with games like Red Dead Redemption 2 taking up over 100 gigs with Cyberpunk taking up 80 gigs and so forth. All of these games take up so much gigs and storage and if you're installing a lot of these bigger games you're only going to be able to install five or six games even if you have over a terabyte of storage. This is why I highly recommend you pick up an SD card like I have and they're pretty cheap as well especially when they're on sale like at the moment for Black Friday and so on. Other than those two things I don't think there's really any other accessories you need for your Steam Deck to truly enhance that experience as getting a dock and getting an SD card will truly maximize your overall Steam Deck experience to the maximum. These next two sections will be extremely brief as I've already made separate videos on both of them which you can watch down below in the description and I just want to talk about them briefly as if you really want to see the certain details and elements that comprise of these two applications for your Steam Deck you can watch those two videos on your own time. Starting with EmuDeck as is in the name this will essentially allow you to easily emulate all of your retro consoles on the Steam Deck. This is N64, NES, SNES etc and you can do as many consoles as you want with as many games as you want and the best thing about emu deck is that it will seamlessly integrate this into your steam library making it look like all of these retro games that you have emulated are part of your steam library which is easily its coolest component in addition to that it will optimize performance for the games you install as well and i highly recommend you install emu deck if you do plan on using the steam deck for emulation as i do and it really is a seamless experience especially when you use emu deck and although i haven't made my own tutorial video on how to install emu deck i'll link down one in the description below which is the one that i use to install EmuDeck in under 20 minutes as it's an extremely easy process and I highly recommend all of you do it. Now the last thing I want to talk about is something called Decky Loader. This is essentially a marketplace or an application that will allow you to add a bunch of plugins onto your Steam Deck. As you can see on my Steam Deck throughout the video it looks very customized and isn't exactly how it is when you originally get your Steam Deck. You can do all of this customization to your liking through Decky Loader and installing all of the different plugins that it has to offer. I also of course as mentioned earlier do have a separate video on this which I also show how you can install this in under two minutes. So I highly recommend you watch that video if you are interested in installing different plugins on your Steam Deck. Decky Loader is an awesome tool and I highly recommend that if you really want to customize your experience on the Steam Deck and make it look exactly like how you want in terms of the user interface and so much more I highly recommend you watch that video and install Decky Loader for yourself. And that's pretty much it for the video. None of these tips that I've given throughout this video are strictly necessary in order to truly enjoy your Steam Deck. Rather, doing these will really enhance your experience and really maximize it so you get everything you can out of your Steam Deck. If there's anything I'm missing, if you do have a Steam Deck, please comment down below. And if there's any questions any of you have about the Steam Deck setup or anything mentioned throughout this video, please drop a comment down below and I'll try to respond to you. Other than that, I think it's time you install some games on your Steam Deck and start enjoying your Steam Deck to its fullest extent. Anyway, that's all from me for today's video. I hope you all did enjoy this video. If you did, consider subbing to the channel and dropping a like, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.